We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh yeah. Today we are talking about how to take your content strategy to the next level. And I, I'm gonna make a quick parenthesis here. I actually heard a podcast from her guest that she says she didn't like the word strategy. <laughs> so we're gonna have to ask we'll her about into that. that. Yes. And uh, guys, before we get started, please don't forget or go ahead actually and go, go subscribe hit and smash that subscribe button follow us on social media at biz rose go on facebook and instagram we're happy to answer any any questions slide into those dms that's don't right be shy. guys and if you find this episode impactful please don't forget to share it with all those other people that you know they're gonna find this episode impactful and please don't forget to leave a five-star review Thank you. So today's guest is one of our future BFFs. That's right. We are making it official. That being said, you have heard us talk about content conversations for a while now. And that is exactly how we met today's guest. Sliding her, <laughs> sliding into her DMs. Although at first she thought we were a butt. Hmm, awkward. awkward. <laughs> we kindly bonded over the fact that we all work with content. Let me tell you guys, you are in for a real Three. Today's guest is probably one of the most knowledgeable humans when it comes to content. She creates content engines that will anchor you as the go-to expert in your industry. Psst. Talk about a big and amazing and bold promise. I love it. So she works with eight and nine figure entrepreneurs, including more than 20 two CC, two CC award winners three 10X award winners, and recently stepping into contract to lead the content teams for Russell Branson and the ClickFunnels brand. Wow, just wow. That is right, guys. Please put your hands together and welcome high volume content strategy master, amazing mom, and one of her newest BFFs, Miss Holly Flick. Welcome to the show, Holly. Welcome. We're so excited hey to have guys. you. We we announced it to the world. We are now BFFs. That's no it. going back. No going back. We're, you're stuck with Dude, us. I'll take that tattoo. We're good. <laughs> That's, That's awesome, you guys. Well, Holly, I love your energy. Ah, this is so fun. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank we you. we we have like five cup of coffees. <laughs> That's why we forgot to press the record button at the, at before uh, all these Every, things. Everything started, yeah. So, yeah, today has been kind of an, an odd day, but on the good way. And uh, I'm so happy to have you on the show oh, because yeah. we're about to dive in into some fun things. But yeah. before we get started, Holly, um, uh, who who's Holly? Like, how do you end up working with content and uh, with probably one of the best companies to work for ever, right? And uh, with some of the most amazing people to work with ever yeah so how do you how do holly get there you know what it's probably haphazard it wasn't uh it wasn't a planned out thing it wasn't something like i went to school to become the thing <laughs> um you know it all started in the hospital to be honest with you my wow. daughter has some pretty serious medical uh, issues and we were in the hospital for an extended time when she was just a baby and had a bunch of people pinging us asking us for information and just couldn't handle it so i was like i mean this is like 15 years ago right so i'm like oh just go on uh go on this Facebook thing and it wasn't 15 years ago, it was a while ago, but I was like, go on Facebook thing and there's this thing called a page and I'll, I'll update that thing, right? So I started this Facebook page for my daughter and that's where I put everything and everybody's mad at me because they didn't have a Facebook account. Like nobody knew what a Facebook was, right? So I put all the, the updates on there and didn't know how to make it like, there wasn't any way to like make it private at that point. So I kind of figured it was like a group chat. By the time we got home, there's 500 some odd people following this page where we're updating about our daughter's seizures and what was going on in her world. And uh, it kind of turned into like over the next like four or five years turned into this really cool page where we got to encourage and educate other families of kids who were going through the same kind of thing. And I loved it. Like I am a natural <laughs> communicator where 
Um, you know, I'm probably more of an overshare than anything else, but I really just love the written word. I love the spoken word and I've always been like that. So it just kind of blew up into this like, wow, I could like I could actually use this weird digital communication thing that that's growing. I mean, at that point, yeah. like Twitter's a baby, like things are just little, right? Like I could actually use this to make a difference and change people's worlds and and uh so I, I started doing this for businesses. It was like, hey, like I come from corporate sales. So okay. I understood working with businesses to, in their marketing and sales department. So I started working with businesses to put their messages online and change the world for them and kind of grew into this cool agency thing that was doing pretty well. And <laughs> and, uh, and then just pinged recently by, by Brunson and, and his team and just said, hey, you know, we like what you're doing and we come help us out. And and they're just most amazing people in the world. So that's kind of, I mean, that's a, the short, the short version of it, but yeah, that, I love, yeah, I love it. I love how you share, like, you're like this over communicator and like you found in, mm -hmm. you know, social media, like that one thing. And I think like for both of us, like that was a, 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 a long thing. We even ask ourselves sometimes like who, like, who, who are we? Because we grew up playing soccer. That's the thing. We wanted to be pro players. That's why we we're here in the States. But after that ended, it was like, Oh, what now? right what now and i and i think we found refuge on on these platforms right sharing what we love sharing what we're learning and I, you know i relate big time you know with with your story so thank you for sharing yeah i love how it'll happen very organically to be honest mm. right it's like unintended I, totally and, and i know <laughs> and i know how we, i love what you said over sharer that you are an over sharer and i was like wow that is so cool to put it that way that you love used to share stuff with people right like share your knowledge and all that stuff and i'm sure that has translated into your business now right oh 100 yeah i mean i have a, I have trouble turning it off when it comes to you know having <laughs> consulting combos and whatnot where it's just but, there isn't a real clear line between like i need to stop here and not share it versus just i want to have a conversation and I mean, my degree in college was in philosophy and so it was just mm. the idea of of um how do we take a question or uh, an idea and just beat the stink out of it verbally back and forth and, and solve problems that way? And I think yeah. it, um, social media is just a great place for that too. Oh, yeah. And so it just, it is, it's an organic, it's interesting that you said soccer though. You guys <laughs> came here yeah. and I'm sure like I should have heard this by now, but <laughs> no, it's okay. chat about how did you come here with that? What does that happen there? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, growing up, that was a dream play soccer professionally, a hundred percent. And, uh, we had the opportunity to actually play in Europe for a couple of years and, and, uh, travel. And then, uh, we landed here in the States because we're originally from Venezuela. So, uh, the situation was not, uh, ideal to yep. to you know continue to develop professionally so we decided okay you know let's use soccer as a tool to come here in the states and study and go to school and figure things out because at that point you know pro was not an option anymore or we thought it wasn't an option uh, you know fancy here almost mm. to play soccer <laughs> professional here in the states yeah um, close. <laughs> and then after that, uh, yeah, we decided to start our own business because uh, we did not want to go to the corporate life. And that's how Biz Bros was started about five years ago. Yeah. That's such a good story. You guys, I knew we'd be best friends. I played like Olympic development soccer all through what? my years. Like, okay, we are going to have to I make know. a team for sure just saying, one day. This is what we're going to do. There's yep. there's going to be some moment in, at some event coming up here where we just have games. We're going to have a little tourneys and we'll we'll make it happen. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, do you know Jeremy Kovatana by any chance? Yes. I don't know him personally, but I know of him. You know, okay, yes. well, he plays soccer too. So... <laughs> Well, there we go. We got five people already. We can play a five we'll a do, side. Uh, you will do the Clean yeah. Funnels professional team. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I th I think we can. I think we. This we, is a thing. Yeah, this is oh. a thing happening. Shirts already, it's happening. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if you're listening or watching, go ahead. Let us know in the DMs that you want to be part of this team, and we'll, we'll hold some tryouts, and it'll yeah. be fun. <laughs> We're doing this. This is happening. We are. Yeah. This is gonna be fun. I love cool, it. Cool, you guys. So, so Holly, you mentioned that you came from the corporate world, right? Like corporate sales and that all this, like, um, in my mind is like super formal, super static, right? And it's like, it's, it's hard to pivot sometimes and implement some of the strategies that, uh, maybe nimble entrepreneurs can implement with content and these things. So how was that transition between corporate and then starting this agency with, uh, the type of clients that you have now, right? And what was the process that shaped what you have now? You know, I think as far as the transition goes, it wasn't too difficult because I was never involved. I mean, back when I was in corporate sales and marketing, it was print 
you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was traditional marketing, like in trad marketing, it's a different conversation. And so transitioning into, by the time I got to the place where I have a pitch deck for a corporate client, we're talking about things that they don't, that a lot of the, my corporate clients don't know yet. Like traditional media is one of those things that they understand that they've been doing for years, that there are mm -hmm. models for it. When you start talking about digital content, um, and I, I mostly work with unpaid, although I'm very familiar, my agency used to do paid content, but most of what I do right now is advise on unpaid content. So when you start talking about this end of it, it's almost like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I mean, with my clients, because my clients are, are a little bit, bit bigger revenues wise, but like a lot of them are just, they're, mm. they're looking for some models that they can implement at scale. Yeah. And there's the gap, right? There's the models that, that we can implement as, as entrepreneurs, as small businesses, you know, SM, you know, small, medium sized businesses. And then there are things that corporations and larger businesses need and it's more um methodology and there needs to be models proven right and yeah. so when you talk then that, that's what doesn't exist as much yet mm -hmm. so when you can talk about that understanding what they're used to it's kind of like you know i talk about fluency a lot and fluency is key right when we talk about social it's like if, you're, if you don't understand fluency then you're gonna go you know talk like an idiot on on twitter because yeah. you you know copy and pasted something you put on instagram and twitter's <laughs> gonna be like get off the heck what are you doing right like <laughs> You have to understand the, the the vernacular. You have to understand the language of the people you're talking to. Yeah. So when we go to corporate, that that's the, the benefit for me was being able to talk with the same language, but I'm talking about a, a topic that they really need and they really want. Yeah. And then I'm offering them something that nobody's doing, which is a method um, that's scalable, right? Yeah. I mm -hmm. love it. I, I found it interesting, you know, like a lot of people find very difficult to kind of like quantify the the benefits of the unpaid content right and like i we have run into that a few times where people yeah. was like well but like how do i know and you know they have lots of objections and we're like oh come on you, you need to do it right <laughs> so how do you go about approaching those people right that maybe i mean we know we've talked about dream customers so obviously probably that's not gonna be your dream customer but what how do you talk about you know um tackling the unpaid content you know all these challenges that people might have in their mind like why should i be doing the unpaid content right so the problem that they're having isn't that they can't tie metrics to what they're doing right so um i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree with you on one thing that i don't have that problem when you're talking about a bigger company because any company needs and especially with the investment that i'm asking them to make yep. in me or my agency they have to be able to yeah show Yep. Right now, in my point, I'm usually talking to a marketing manager and they have to be able to show their, you know, CMO mm -hmm. yep, that they're investing in this thing that's going to show something. So yeah, there has yeah. to be some KPI. There has to be some quantifiable metrics for this thing. Right. So what what I usually tell people is that you're asking the wrong questions and it's because you're putting mm -hmm. out the wrong content that you've never seen an ROI and you don't understand how to track the things. Right. So a lot of organic content is haphazard. It's it's regurgitated. It's something that has very little plan to it, let alone a strategy, which are two totally different things and why I hate the word strategy, right? So it's a completely <laughs> diff huge difference. It's a chasm between strategy and plan. But a lot of corporations have a plan and they just start throwing things out there based on like on Tuesdays, we're going to talk about this and Wednesday, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Um, but because they're not thinking through all the steps that they need to think through, particularly their calls to action, yeah. they have no idea where their content fits in the funnel. Mm. right so there are laws and there are arts and sciences right so the laws of marketing are irrefutable and they're quantifiable in a funnel there are metrics that we tie to the different stages of a funnel yeah I and mean, just for instance at the top of a funnel when we're talking about a discovery client or somebody who's coming in who doesn't know about you there are metrics we tie to that right like that tra traffic yeah yep. like Are we getting eyeballs, engagement on social? Are we seeing, right? Like you can go a little bit higher and talk like subscribers and likes and things, but we all know those are kind of fuzzy at this point. Oh, yeah. Like whether they actually tie into leads, it doesn't matter. But like, yeah. and then you move down further into like quad, like number of leads, quantifiable leads, yep. and then and then conversion sales and those sorts of things as you go down. So if you don't have a strategy that says, this is what we're saying and, and why, these are the messages that we're putting out and the calls to action tie into this yeah. part of the funnel, then there's no way, obviously. And then, you know, we just talk to the clients, say it's not your fault. Yeah. Like 
you didn't know what you were doing. You're just like verbally vomiting all over all of your <laughs> platforms and then and or regurgitating the one verbal vomit you did all over all the things in the wrong languages. Yep. So yep. you're not going to be able to tie those things in, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like yeah. throwing something I, at the wall I, and being I, like, I, hope something I, sticks. I love that because I mean, uh, we have a client that they're, they're, they, they sell houses basically. And, uh, they use content to go into a turnkey product. Right. And one of the first meetings that we had with them is like, okay, how do, how are we planning? Let's say like the CMO was there and he's like, Hey, how do we connect, right? The content, how do we like put in these like dot dotted lines between whatever we're publishing into our sales process. And that was a discovery as uh, we started going with it because it, it was fun. It's like, we, it was a constant, it was the only thing that we changed so they could start tracking it. And the cool thing was that they started seeing the results because the path was so clear that they yeah. were able to see, you know, how that engagement was like moving towards the sales process. Um, right. So I love that because I think that's what a lot of people miss when they get into like these content calendars and the random things and like, let's celebrate mm -hmm. here and let's celebrate. It's like, oh my gosh, like that, that is, you're missing the point. You're missing the point of, of content. Yeah, uh, and again, I agree 100% with you. I think I express myself wrongly. I am, again, all about KPIs, you know, like you need to be measuring that. I think some people have the perception of how do you measure that? They, I don't think they know, right? So, and I think, again, talking about going back to dream customers, that's why we focus on some people that already have their processes, right? Like they have their sales systems, all those processes, post content, they have them established, they know their metrics, they know what they're looking for. Because just like my brother was saying, like when we went and talked to this client, they had their objectives with the metrics and then a quarter later we checked them and they were like awesome it's we are doing great let's keep moving forward right so mm -hmm. for those listening guys <laughs> again don't just do a content pretty content calendar <laughs> know your metrics and have your objectives right right i mean that's that's key and really i think a lot of small businesses come to an organic solution of some kind whether it's an agency or a content calendar or like a tool or like a take a class type thing or a coach or whatever and they don't have things in order before they get there so they don't have offers that they know that they're driving towards or they don't have a clear path to those offers right mm. they just know they need to be visible right that's like yeah. that's the whole like visibility myth which is like if i'm visible then people will you know find me and then all the things will happen but if we don't have the back end of our business and what you're saying like a lot of my clients and and honestly to what you were saying before a lot of my clients come with very clear cut in stone pathways to profit or they wouldn't have the businesses that they do and so yep, they yep. come and they say you know this is the metric i need you to affect how does that happen what is that you know what do we do there um and a lot of small businesses don't know their numbers yeah right and so when you have yeah. someone who comes to you and they're like how do you affect my numbers and you're like well what are your numbers and they're like yeah i don't know i'm like well where do you want me to put content out and they're like yeah i don't know and you're like well, like, what are we selling? And they're like, yeah, some stuff. And so it's like, <laughs> like at one point, yeah. um, we have to be consultative, right? So when I used yeah. to sell corporate, like I did corporate software, uh, you know, SaaS sales. And we used to, we sat down with like, you know, Nike and Adidas, right? And it was um, a consultative sale. Like that's what we were trained in was how do you come to somebody and they say, because the, because every purchasing agent, whether it's small or large business, is going to want to have, um, is going to want to push your boundaries as a business. And they're going to want to say, um, what can you do for me? I want you to do all of this. And, you know, uh, an agency without boundaries is going to say, yeah, we can do all the things. And then they're going to get burned and their turnover is going to be huge, right? So when an agency owner comes to me and they're like, hey, we do content and we have really high turnover or we only keep people for like two, three months. I'm like, okay, hold on. What are you telling people that you do or that you can yeah. do or whatever, right? As opposed to saying, this is our scope. And in a consultative sale, bigger, small business, you're saying, yeah, but like, I, I can do this and I'm good at this, this, and this, and this is what you need. This thing over here doesn't work if you don't. Like you have to yeah. make this thing work. Ooh. Like have you ever had a client that won't produce content and then ask you to do their content? Oh, we've been there. Oh, we, plenty of times. I, I love this story that you're telling <laughs> right now because we've been in all of those. We've been uh, in the place where we didn't know exactly what we offer and we would go, they would we'll just like tell us all, all their problems <laughs> and we're like, yes, we can do that. Turn around, go to YouTube. How do we do that? Okay, cool. Right. And I mean, that yeah. was obviously our early years. We had no focus, yeah. no direction. It was we're, painful. We're pivoting painful. a lot. But at the same time, 
we have worked with those people that are like they are not producing content and then mm -hmm. we pretty much uh kind of like convince them is the word we convince them that they needed to produce the content making it way more difficult for us and the We're fulfillment not proud of that. yeah and, and i mean again we learn our lesson <laughs> hey in our backstory that sounds amazing right but it was really painful going yeah. through that process right especially if you're an, a smaller business and you're starting out like it is it was so hard and uh, it wasn't until we reached out for help right and uh, you mm -hmm. know we're with steve and in the last six months we gained it so much clarity to the point that we're now having a lot of meetings right to the point that we're like, hey guys, like that's not our scope. That's not exactly what we do. We can help you here, here, and here. Yep. This is the things that you can expect from us. And and you you said it very clearly. And this is how high level people operate. So I think small businesses, or if you're starting out, you should take that example, right? That that and follow that path yep. and start getting to know your metrics. So then you can apply the changes that you need to change and and track them correctly to see what you can. What are the pieces that you need to move? back and forth so uh thank you for bringing that to to the light because it's such a challenge out there i feel like with uh, small business owners and people you know that are diving into this so i i see a potential like chicken and the egg story here because you know it's like okay you have to have that that process right that sales process solid so we publish and we see results right but what happens right if if that process is not so solid but then you are listening that you should be starting to publish and create these content. So what is like that sweet spot and what do you recommend if there's somebody in that position? So somebody who, help me understand here, somebody who doesn't yeah. have their sales process, they don't know what they're offering, what do they not have yet? So yes, like a solid sales process. So let's say they have a running business, you know, they're they're, they're making some money, right? And they, they want to start creating content either organically or paid. With paid, I think it's like more direct, right? Because you can see those KPIs, right? And, and if it's broken, you're definitely gonna see it. But then they tend to go on the organic side and then they don't see the results and they get super frustrated, right? And it's it, it then becomes a little bit of a mindset issue where it's like, okay, should I keep going? Should I stop? Then this thing doesn't work because maybe it's not the content, but maybe is the process itself, right? So it, it's, I feel it's like a little circle there that it's like, okay, how, as you start creating pub, uh, like content- what, what should I fix first? Like, should I dedicate my yeah. attention to the publishing? Should I dedicate my attention to processes? Is that what you're talking about? I That's think, good. I, I think that it's A and B, right? So I would never say don't publish because that's that it's an engine that just needs to keep going at the very least like you guys in your early times when you said that there was some episodes you never published and never saw which we all have done oh my gosh yeah right, we all mm -hmm. have like an archive of things that we will won't show people until <laughs> yeah. we're famous and then we'll be like remember this one time yeah i did this thing and everybody and it was laughs so dumb and i look really stupid <laughs> and i wore that ugly outfit and i said that thing with that radio voice that was really dumb so like so, so like not publishing like we publish for ourselves first Mm. We publish for ourselves to get our voice. We publish for our, like 100%. We publish for ourselves. The other thing we publish for is to continue to create original thoughts because that's the number one job of any, and I'm going to die on this one. Number one job of any CEO or business owner is to, is to think original thoughts, right? So that's why we have to create space and be able to do that. So that's the other reason that we publish anyway, right? So don't stop publishing. That's the thing. Um, also, I may be overcomplicating things for some people, or they may go down the road of overcomplication. You don't have to have like every step mm -hmm. of your funnel set up. Remember, all we're doing is traffic. Yep. So like if we back up and don't call it content or paid or like organic and all these funky words that scare people and they think no money comes <laughs> out of it and too much work happens, yeah. back up and just be like, all we're doing is creating leads. Yeah. And yeah. everybody needs leads and you know what to do with one. If I brought you a person, literally walked them up to you at an event and I said, this person wants your stuff. What would you do with that person? At the very least, you'd sit down and talk to them, right? So then yeah. have a conversation. That's great. So you already have a CTA. Yeah. You already have what you want people to do at the end of your thing. So don't overcomplicate it, right? Make sure that it's not difficult for someone to buy from you. Where are they going to get your stuff? Understand that they need to have very minimal or they need to have at least a base level of, of opportunities to learn about you because when you first start publishing, all you're really most likely going to get is are the people at the highest level, right? In the funnel where they're just looking around and checking you out, right? So make sure yeah. that you have those things met. But everything else will come. So I would say publish first, right? Okay. Make sure that you have one, just one solid CTA <laughs> that you can give people. Okay. Even yeah. if you only give that, you know, 50% of the time, you have to have something that works 
And even if that's a phone number, it doesn't matter. Like they have to be able to, to take action. Yes, Otherwise yeah. you just frustrate the stink out of people with your content, right? Yeah. And then as things come, you'll start to realize, I have a lot of people calling me now. This phone thing doesn't work. I have to add a step. Otherwise I, I'll be on the phone all the time. So now there <laughs> needs to be like a Google form. And the Google form asks them the questions that you're asking on the phone, mm -hmm. because as you get more volume, then you need to step away from that. And it will just like, either you'll go crazy and you'll be a bottleneck or you will up and start creating the things on the back end. I love what it. people do that I think is the problem is that they have this itty bitty sales process. Right. Let's see. Hey, we're back. back online. So we're going to actually call Holly real quick and make sure that we are all good to go. That's crazy, guys. It just, <laughs> the computer just crashed. Go totally, completely. completely crashed. It's all good. This is the fun thing about going live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Hey, what's hey. up? Welcome back, part two the, the, here with Hollis Lake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like everything crashed. It just like froze. Died. Computer didn't work. We had to turn off everything and turn it back on. <laughs> We're so sorry for Holly. Uh, this is the fun thing it's about right. going live. That's right. This is digital life right now. Everybody's used to it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It is what it is. All right. Besides, we were like, oh my God, is this like a pause, like a suspense pause? An open loop. An right? open loop. Should we? I'm so good like that. What, what, <laughs> do, we, <laughs> what do we do? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was, right. that was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I think th th this is going to go <laughs> uh, into the same bucket of stories that the one that happened with Marley Jacks, that we had a whole. Uh, <laughs> kind of like equipment freak out as well with Zoom and all that. It's like, oh, you guys are just too good. That's it. That's it. That's why. We just broke the internet. We yeah, broke the exactly. internet. I mean, what, what we can do. So, okay, back on track. So, Let's do go. you remember like the thought process? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. No, I think what, mm, we were talking about the idea of like, Okay, so business is what they do is they will create. I remember, their, I think it was a, a little they, bit of their sales process yes, and then they'll no. start publishing. Yep. And then the publishing will get going and they'll be excited because they'll start to see some stuff and um, they'll they'll focus 100% on the publishing and they'll start blowing stuff up and then they'll go and they'll go get a ton more uh, people to help them create stuff or they'll focus on like, how do we show up in more places because we're seeing a little bit of you know, effect here or whatever. Yeah. And they, they lose track of the sales process over here, and then it ends up. I mean, it's it's like you know starting ads, and ads work great, but then all of a sudden you start like you blow up your ads, and you you know tri double, triple, ten x your ad spend, and it breaks everything back here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the frustrating thing with your with your social is that there's a lot of time that you could spend on it and and waste it right it's not as easy to figure out where you're you're giving away your time as it is with an mm -hmm. ad that has a negative ROAS right so like yeah we have to be careful with that because it depending on our personality it can be really sexy to to ramp up our publishing um and not realize that we're wasting time or that we're you know put stuff out on 15 platforms and we don't do it, right yeah, like I yes. know somebody who spent 20,000 a month on their on their organic social and their back end was broken right wow. so like that's right. And I'm not saying a lot of us can't do that, but yeah. you just like, I think it's really smart, just like every other for advertisers that do, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that reminds me a little bit of the story of Steve Larson on, you know, as, as he was building his business and he was getting sales, he kind of like stopped the sales, not completely, but like l slowed down so he could the build input, his processes build the so they could match the the input of, of leads and all that. And I think that's kind of what, what you're talking about here, you know, like, okay, the content is working and then they just pour everything over there, right? And they kind of like forget a little bit about their processes that they might be broken yeah. and then they're just going to not be ser properly serving their, their customers that are coming in and then that's just going to hurt the business because either they're not going to be able to close them or second, they're going to leave frustrated being like, Hey, like these guys are not paying attention, not being able to fulfill all that. So I like the, the balance element that you're bringing to the table. Right. Right. But think about, think about this. And I challenge you on this one in your audience too. What is content? Right. So what is in the bucket of content? Um, so when, when ClickFunnels comes to me and they're like, Hey, we need help with our content. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are they talking about? What, you know, a $300 million a year company who is arguably one of the largest content creators in the world, yeah. right? Versus, you know, us when we talk about content, right? So, and that's a, that's a whole, and we can do a whole nother thing about like, what is content? Yeah. But where I want us to, to keep in mind is the first type of content we need to pay attention to is anything we've committed to provide to someone, mm. right? So especially for an intro and in, in, sorry, an infopreneur or somebody who offers like a digital information product, um, you have a customer, like an online customer service situation happening. Um, for those of us that have Facebook groups, right. That we gather, whether it's affiliate or something else, yeah. like have you committed yourself that if you buy from me or not even buy from me, but you commit to your time, like joining my group or whatever else it is, is that like the first thing you think about when you come up with your content? Like I need to make sure that I fulfill there. That's yeah. part of that back end stuff, right? People put content out. They're like thinking YouTube, right? Content is YouTube. We're put, throwing out stuff on social, but if you're not meeting the needs and this, I've seen this so many times where there are three different types of content. And again, we can go back to this, but like we have customer service facing content. Yeah. We have brand communication content, right? And then we have mm. conversion content. Mm. Those are the three different buckets everything falls into, right? Like ads, the content we put out for ads, that falls yeah. into conversion. Like we're looking for a response. We're looking for some sort of conversion there, right? Um, communication stuff is like the stuff that you just put out that so people know who you are, what you're about, your values, you're, you're doing your PR stuff, you're connecting with people. And then there's the customer service slash delivery content, right? This is like people paid you, right? So in the order of importance, and I've seen this messed up so many times, especially in the direct response world, right? Is like, they're mm -hmm. all about conversion first, right? Like do your conversion stuff, like yeah. go out there. And that's like, Gary V talks about that. Like, don't go out <laughs> and like, it's 80, 20. Don't shove your, you know, your, your <laughs> face in everybody's face and ask for money all the time, right? That's yeah. just common sense. So I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to say, customer service has to come first. Mm -hmm. As entrepreneurs, we can sleep when we know that we're living in integrity and we're not, we're not selling something yeah. we're not fulfilling on. Right. Mm. So that means that if I tell people I'm going to do a once a week show, you're committing to content. You're going to do that first. That's yep. customers. You're actually serving your customers right now. Right. Yeah. Every week you have to, you have to find that slot and you do it. Mm -hmm. Um, if that, if that means that I have a Q and a inside a group that people paid me for or didn't pay me for, I'm going to show up for that. That's like in my content quota for myself as an entrepreneur, I have exactly. to make sure I'm meeting those needs as well as creating and updating content that I'm sold, that I've sold. If you have a course or something, right? Like, are you updating that? Is that quality content? Then we back out and we say, okay, now we're going to talk about brand communications. Okay. So where are we next? We're out, like, where do we need to be and what do we need to be saying? Mm -hmm. We're going to develop that. And we're going to make sure that we're at the base level showing up where we need to show up to serve people so that they know who we are. And then we're going to talk about where do we fit in our calls to action and our conversion content. Mm -hmm. When we build, and that, that's, that's more strategy. Yeah, it's not it's not playing. There's like strategies, there's plans, and then there's tools like a calendar. Yeah, right? perfect. I, I love this. I <laughs> this I, is a master class right now. I mean, not yeah. only that, yeah. uh, you mentioned that you have a degree in philosophy, right? Right. <laughs> I, I, I can honestly, I know you're like, what, what does this have to do with everything? Uh, but it's like, <laughs> I love like the way you like look at these questions and you're like, let me flip it. Like you're literally like attacking these questions for every, every single angle and like building on them. Honestly, I've never heard, heard it like this, right? Like mm -hmm. the three types of content and how you flip it. Like it should be customer service, brand communication, then the conversion content. And I, I just love it, honestly. I love how your like thought process works. Uh, that's I'm a fan. I'm a hardcore fan. I appreciate <laughs> it. It's, it's survival for me. If my brain doesn't think through things like this, yes. like I, I can't speak. I, yeah. I, and going back to what you were saying about coming up with original thoughts, yeah, right? exactly. Uh, it, it, it's is that thing, right? So, so how does somebody go to find those original thoughts? They create space, and they stop listening, like. Mm. I have a post on my Instagram and I just, somebody liked it. It's an old one. Somebody liked it um, just today and I found it again and I was like, oh my gosh, that was smart. Who said that? But it was like, I'm totally not pounding my chest. I'm just laughing at the fact that I said something that I would want to repeat again. So like, <laughs> it, I just talked about how you have to keep your time on your calendar for thinking sacred, right? The interweb mm. is, they're, they're creativity killers. 
right? And yeah. we know we get in these slumps as entrepreneurs. Like we got into entrepreneurial life because we're creative people. Like we're not, we don't have to say we're creatives. Like I don't like that chasm. That's what it is. Like we, we have to think original thoughts in order to feel like us and to feel like who we are. But if we're watching social all the time, we're regurgitating what we're seeing. We start to lose that feeling like we have original thoughts. So we just have to like, yeah. we all think original thoughts. We're all created to think we're all created to think original thoughts. So yeah. we just have to give ourselves the space, right? Yeah. Do you do you That's feel it. like do you feel like people that started this content journey uh maybe not not at the corporate level, but you know, entrepreneurs are trying to start that message. Do you feel like they stop saying original thoughts because of fear of something external uh coming at them? That's a good question. I think they prob there's probably a good subset of people that don't communicate because they've been told something or they've read their own comments, right? Like you gotta be really careful and you gotta know yourself enough to know whether you mm -hmm. can handle to read your own ad comments or your own comments on things. I think, I think honestly, like I have four kids and one of the biggest things I want them to graduate my home with is understanding themselves. Like how do you work, mm -hmm. right? Like. And I, so when I, when I start with a client, I don't care how big they are. One of the very first questions I'll say is how do you create, how do you think best? Yeah. Right. And there's three ways they're going to tell you, right. Voice, video, or text. Right. Yeah. So great. I want your downloads regularly to be in that form. I don't care what that looks like. If it's in the shower and you're writing notes on one of those shower <laughs> pads and you literally take pictures of them and show them to me. Yes. Not in the shower when you do that, but like do that thing. Do <laughs> me the thing, right? No mirrors yeah. around, please. Okay. No, no mirrors. And <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Like the, like I had literally had a client say, can I send you my journal? Yeah. Right. This is a person who sits on the floor or sits on a beach and just is prolific with what comes out in that form. Yeah. Right. We can work with that. That's great. Um, Are you somebody, Russell Brunson, his whole first podcast, right? The marketing in your car thing is literally sitting in his car, like talking at whatever, right? Yeah. Like we need to know ourselves enough to know how we create naturally mm. and then do it in your closet. Like nobody's looking. Mm -hmm. The problem that we most people have is that they're creating content for everyone else in the way that everyone else says that they need to. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, when you get to a certain level, y'all, like we need to play the game. We yeah. have to play the game of putting content out in a certain way. So there may be a point when your team comes to you and they say, we need a YouTube channel in order to be relevant and competitive. We have most of you guys aren't there yet. Like you just yep. need to create and get it out of you. My biggest nightmare, especially working with a big client is when they come to me and I say, okay, great. Where's your content library? <laughs> and they're like, like, huh? And it's not just that they haven't been creating. It's that they haven't been thinking. Yeah. Like they'll show me their library and it'll be like a bunch of quote cards that somebody came up with that they copied from things like, yeah. hang on, like, where is the stuff that's been coming? And, and they'll say, well, I don't have a digital library. And I'll say, great. Where is your, uh, where's your journal? Yeah. Like shoot me the pages of your journal that aren't inappropriate. Like, l let me see the things that you think yeah. so I can understand you so that people can understand you. Right. So as entrepreneurs, We have to create space to think in the way that we think, and then we have to do it regularly, whatever that looks like. Yeah. No judging, doesn't matter. Yeah, I I love this message because of so many factors. One of those yeah. being that we live in that hustle culture, right? That is go, 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 go. And people do not slow down to even have the, those thoughts that you're saying that it's like, who am I, right? And we heard it from Phil Jones, and he was, say, he was like, The best way to serve others is like, ask yourself, who am I for, right? Like, who do I want to help? And asking those questions, you're going to learn who you are. And I mean, I, I love that because I feel like in the last few months, I've been getting a little bit more into that, into the slowing down, mm -hmm. stop going all the time, the hustle, the staying at, till 9 p.m. at the office, you know, it's like, no like we need to find who we are and i think part of the podcast has helped us a lot actually Big like time. bringing our our message in to this platform and sharing with people as awesome as holly um has helped us discover i think who we are so yeah. i honestly this is my take for those that are listening i think that this is my for me the one thing that i would take out of this podcast guys is this part so just go back and replay it again
Yeah, that's it. That's so, so Holly, we we want to um kind of like say, uh, I I think we need like part two and part three of this. Like we could just like <laughs> co continue a hundred percent. So, but for today, for today, let's reel it down, Luisa. Okay, uh, <laughs> bring it in. Maybe like what's like one that 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 action point, right? Like, and I think like we just like there's so many of them, but like one thing, one very simple thing, I could go along the way of like original thoughts. You know, we we touched on that point, but um, what is that one thing that you can recommend people to take action today that they could see a progress, that they could get that next win, so then they can keep bringing more wins. Um, start publishing. Because it, it all starts there. And honestly, I don't care if you never put it on the web. Yeah. Create something, create something digitally and regularly. Yeah. Like I have a YouTube channel nobody knows about. Nobody's ever going to see this <laughs> stuff, you guys. It's been there for years. Nobody sees it. Yeah. Right? I have wow. a I have a secret Facebook group. <laughs> secret Facebook group. It's called I'm not telling you. It's a secret <laughs> Facebook group <laughs> that no like I have a best friend in there because I can get her to go in and like comment on my outfits sometimes when I'm doing the I things, but it. that's where I go to like test all the things that's been there for years. I use it less now, but I love it. It will come. I like, like that. when you start publishing, the rest will come, but nothing will come if you don't start. And that's the biggest thing. Mm. And then just be you think original things and be you. That's where, awesome. where will you be if you did not start publishing? Holly, I'm interested to see this. What's that? Where will you be if you did not start publishing? You personally talking to my private YouTube channel that nobody ever sees. Like if I didn't start <laughs> publishing, I'd be, Oh man, I'm you guys, I'm in tiny, tiny town, Washington. Like there's nobody here y'all. <laughs> and I'm talking to you and like, I have an audience of however many working, you know, I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't say I'd be nowhere because I'd be me and I'd be doing some pretty cool things too. But this just gives me such an awesome opportunity to, to bless people and be, be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I, know where I just like, so you guys know, like her. Yeah, as soon as we asked that question, like her mind was like, I had I literally have no idea because like it's literally her identity, just like it's yeah. uh, it's becoming ours, which is so amazing. And look at all the wonderful things that um, she's creating that her team is creating for for so many people. So if if you are in this journey of entrepreneurship, uh, content creation, uh, get started, right? Just like yep. just like Holly said, just like start creating uh it doesn't matter there's gonna be an audience out there for you you have value to offer to the world and to your audience uh we were in that position where we had no idea and we were like so freaked out to go live even though we play sports in front of people all our lives and uh the second we started doing it this just this just exploded yeah. uh not it, just it, it's therapeutic you're gonna yeah. get to know yourself too along the way and it's a win-win because you're gonna be providing value for others And you're going to literally be providing value for yourself, getting to know yourself. Love it. Well, Holly, thank you so much. How can uh, how can we find you? Where can people connect with you? Um, you know what? My fave place is Instagram. So find me at Hello. I'm actually at Hello Holly Flick on all the things. So every platform, that's just where I am. Um, but Instagram's kind of my fave. That's where I... That's where I hide out. That's where I add all my little stories and yeah. He heads up, guys. She might think that you're a bot, so just make sure that you do a, like an engagement co engaging conversation. I was not irritated. That was like that was so funny. I, was so funny. I love you guys and your messages. It's awesome. I'm sorry. No, it's no, a good, no harsh it's feelings. Hot. We were we laughing about it. The, the, it's such a good, it's such a cool story. Yeah, uh, it is. And, it, and it happens, guys. So, um, well, with that being said, guys, thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe. Holly, do not leave because we have two minutes with you. I know babysitting is coming, but <laughs> go ahead and subscribe to the Contents Profit Podcast and follow us on social media at Beast Bros. Go. That's right, guys. And if you found this episode impactful, which I am sure you did, please don't forget to share with everybody else. See ya. All right. Holly, thank you so much. That was so much fun. Ah, uh, thank you. So, yeah, so did much. Did you write down? Did you guys write down the other things we could talk about? Yeah, definitely. There's like uh, uh, the iPad full of notes. And uh, I'm sure like things are going to come up for yeah. sure as as we evolve on this relationship. I'm, I'm so We're sad. We're so thankful. I'm so sad that like the stream cut off halfway through. But hey. Again, you guys, this is for us as much as it's for everybody else. That's right. Yes. That's right. I was talking with uh, Gabe Schillinger before I did an interview with him, and and we were talking like I think we talked for forty five minutes before we're like, shoot, we got to do the thing, <laughs> like live. Yeah. Hey Holly, by the way, can we take the picture because we're still on live, so we could like go back to Skype real quick. So let's do the selfie. You ready?
Okay, hold on. I, I'm gonna do uh, the, the holy. This is the holy pose. <laughs> All right. So we we are looking at a different camera just in case you're like oh, they're not looking at me. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Awesome. awesome. That was that was so perfect. <laughs> Facebook, thank you so much. We'll see you on Monday. Peace. <laughs>